prods and pole dancing. <laughs> <laughs> she is survived at least temporarily by her terminally ill gecko, Matthew James. <laughs> <laughs> She lives on in our memories and in the great Antonio in the sky. There will be no funeral or memorial service. Oh, God bless him, that lips. I couldn't ask for a better obituary. Happy to oblige. You sending me those things is what got me through hellfire and damnation. The horrible Bible camp that Grandma and Papa used to send me off to in the Adirondacks. It wasn't hellfire and damnation. It was Camp Holy Spirit. Potato, potato. <laughs> you were so young with the pigtails. <laughs> what were you, eight years old? Seven. Do you remember what you said to me when you put me on the bus? Brush your teeth. You said... You said that I was the bravest girl on earth. Every time you sent me a letter with a new Matlip in it, that's who it was addressed to, the bravest girl on earth. I forgot about that. You drive me fucking nuts. But you've always been a great gecko, man. If I was a great gecko, I'd be trying to talk you out of this. You're great because you're not trying. And then, then Matt died, and you weren't even at the funeral. And that should have convinced me. But I couldn't believe the last time I saw you or talked to you was in that fucking hotel room. That night I burned this fucking book. I was so sure you were still alive, even though everyone else in the world said that you were fucking dead. I had to do something about it. So I decided that I was going to look for you. I was going to start right where I lost you. And every year I come to fucking Australia and I show your picture to everybody I meet. Do you know this woman? Have you ever seen her before? And they all just look at me and they shake their heads and they say, oh, I'm sorry. Everybody, so fucking sorry. 